Hi there everybody, it's Martin Twycross, here with another video short, bringing you practical, down-to-earth teachings on mediumship and development, without the fluff. So in today's video I want to talk about the commonly asked question, why is my mediumship getting worse? I want to explore why we sometimes feel that within our mediumship it seems to be getting worse or it's not working as well as we would like and we seem to have gone backwards in some way. It's very commonly encountered by beginners and also intermediates and advanced people alike. So I want to go through seven reasons why we may feel our mediumship is getting worse or going backwards. And also what you can do to ensure that you are progressing, that you're not staying static, stagnant, that you are moving it forward. So if that sounds interesting, do stay with me. Okay, so why is my mediumship getting worse? What are the reasons why we feel that our mediumship is not working as well as we would like, is not moving forwards? Many people encounter this uh, at some stage in their development, but it's almost universal with beginners. I find this almost universal with all people in their development, that they hit a point early in the development where they feel they're going backwards. They feel it's somehow worse than it was to begin with. So in this video, I'm gonna go through seven reasons why. So number one, reason number one, what I call the spiritual sweetie or the spiritual carrot. So this is very common in the beginning of development, uh, but it can also happen at any time in our development regarding certain aspects of our mediumship. But it's very, very common at the very beginning. And what happens is spirit give us a glimpse of our potential. Everything comes together to show us the potential that exists within us. Our mediumship works really well at our first try. Our mediumship in the first couple of circles we attend, it's, it's flying, it's working really well, it's, it's fabulous. And then all of a sudden it seems to go backwards, all of a sudden it doesn't seem to work as well. And what's happening there, it's what I call the spiritual sweetie. You're being given something nice to get your interest. You're given something to get your attention. Uh, I liken it to a carrot with a donkey. You can hang a carrot on the end of a stick and put it in front of the donkey and the donkey will walk towards it. If you like, it's a spiritual carrot. We're showing the potential within us so that way we may move towards that, that we may develop and move towards it. Often the potential we're shown will take time and effort to manifest. We really have to work for it. But that's the idea of the spiritual sweetie, the spiritual carrot, and in my experience, it's incredibly common. It happened to me. Uh, you know, it happens with a lot of beginners. You start, it works really well, then all of a sudden it stops working so well, all of a sudden it doesn't seem to work at all. And in that case, Spirit are saying, right, are you ready to work for it? Are you willing to work for it? Are you gonna put in the time and the effort to achieve that potential? That's what's happening. But it can happen at any stage in our development, and it happened with, with me with trance. I'll explain what happened. I went along to uh, a trance circle where other people were meant to be the mediums going into trance, but everyone had a little try, and I actually went into trance and spoke. And I was quite astounded when I came out and afterwards everyone told me what happened. It was a glimpse of my potential to do trance. Later on, quite a number of years later, where I made the commitment to spirit that I really was going to sit and develop trance, it actually took a long time, maybe even a year or more, before I ever reached what happened in the first circle I ever sat in. So again, we have to work for it. We have to be put, willing to put in the time, willing to put in the effort, willing to move towards it. That's the spiritual sweetie. The second reason why mediumship somehow seems to be getting worse is what I call the wow factor. When we first start doing mediumship, we come to it, we make a link, we get evidence right, we give it to somebody and they say, you're absolutely right. And we go, wow, that's amazing. That's, wow, that's amazing. And that stays with us, that sticks with us. It has an emotional content that stays with us. It stands out within our mind, within our memory. We look back at our early stage of development with rose tinted spectacles because of the wow factor. But then as we begin to develop and getting evidence becomes routine and we accept that we're a medium, then you've lost the wow factor, you've lost the amazement value. So it doesn't feel quite as good and remembering it, you're not drawn there, you're drawn to the first few times where you got something good, something that was taken, something that really showed you you were doing mediumship and we had the wow factor. 
It just so happens we lose the wow factor because we're working with it routinely. That's reason number two. Reason number three I call the conservation of power. Now power is a fuel for mediumship. We can't do mediumship without power. We talk about sitting for spirit to build our power and power manifests the spirit world to us. If you don't have power, you're gonna struggle with mediumship. And in the beginning, when we're first starting in our development as mediums, we haven't really developed our sensitivity. For spirit to get something across to us, they turn the dial up to number 10 or number 20 even. They turn it right off the scale. And we get an image or we get a feeling and they have to impress us so strongly because we haven't developed that fine sensitivity to receive it. So the dial is off the scale. But what happens is that's incredibly power intensive. It uses a lot of power, it's very inefficient. What it means is that the limited amount of power we've got only lasts for a short period of time. And I see it routinely with beginners that they can only work for a limited period of time, a few minutes and the power's gone. But what they get impressed with in those few minutes can be very strong. It can be very uh, strong feelings, very clear pictures, uh, and that stays with us in our memory, just like the wow factor does. But spirit need us to become an energy efficient medium. Spirit need us to be able to learn to work for longer on the power that we've got. And as we develop our sensitivity, then the dial is backed off. It's not that spirit backed the dial off, it's just that as we develop our sensitivity, it takes less effort to get the information across to us. So the dial is turned down. And then what happens is, so that's the conservation of power, is this turning down of the dial. So what happens is the images don't have to be as strong, the feelings don't have to be as strong, and we still get the meaning. So the images aren't strong, the feelings aren't strong, we still get the meaning, and we can work for longer. We can do a 10 minute reading or a 15 minute reading. And as we develop and progress, we reach a point as experienced mediums where the dial can be turned down to almost number one. We get very fleeting glimpses. We get a very fleeting feeling. And because we've developed our sensitivity so high, we're able to understand it and interpret it, but it takes minimal amount of power. And it means the power we've built will last for longer. This explains why experienced working mediums can demonstrate for an hour and a half or more, because they've learned to become efficient mediums that don't burn the power as quickly. But when you think about it, when you get it in the first stages and it's a really strong feeling in your body, oh, I'm getting a heart attack, oh, this is amazing. Or you get a really profound image within your mind, it stays with you. When you're in your middle, later stages of developing mediumship and it's just fleeting, it just pops in and you don't, I don't get images as strong, I don't get feelings as strong, but I don't need them as strong. And that's what I'm talking about with the conservation of power. So the conservation of power is there for our mediumship because it's extremely beneficial to help us work longer. But it feels like our mediumship is going backwards because, hey, the images aren't as strong. The feelings aren't as strong. The knowing isn't as strong. That's what it is. That's reason number three. Okay, reason number four is development is not linear. So a lot of people think that the time spent in development will just get better and it's a nice straight line, but it's not. It can go up in a spurt, a step change, it can go horizontal, it can plateau, but I don't believe it goes backwards. Your development, you can't reverse unfold it, you can't lose it. Whatever we unfold is always there. So I believe you can either go up or you can go across. I don't personally believe we can go backwards. I don't believe anything is ever taken away. I don't believe spirit would make us deliberately worse. We can, I believe, get rusty. If we don't use the developed abilities we have or we play it safe, we can get quite rusty, but we never lose them. So when we're developing, sometimes we get a big step change, we get a big change and we're really pleased. And then sometimes it feels like nothing's happening. It feels like we're on a plateau, but that can be a, a period of consolidation. That can be a period of bedding in. That could be finding a balance. Something's changed and it takes time for your mediumship to find a balance, to find that adjustment. It feels to us like nothing's happening or it feels to us like we're going backwards, but the reality is we're not. We can't go backwards for the reasons I've said. What we've unfolded, what we've developed, is always there. The skills are always there. It's up to us, of course, whether we use them, whether we work with them, but we can get rusty, like I said. But that's reason number four, that sometimes it feels like we could be going backwards or, it, or we've hit a point where we don't develop. Because development is not linear. Reason number five. Reason number five is awareness and perception. So 
It's common to feel that we're on a plateau and it's common to feel that we're actually getting worse, but I believe the reality is not the case. If we could see the big picture, we'd realize that it's not the case. And one of the problems is we're not best placed to judge our own development. We're too close to it. Uh, we change slowly, incrementally, in gradual changes, and we don't see those changes. We're not aware of them. And it feels to us like the changes aren't happening quick enough. But it's just a perception issue, an awareness issue. And we could be getting good every time we work and not recognize it because the development changes are so small. I'll give you a couple of examples of that. In my own mediumship, I used to regularly attend the Arthur Finlay College at Stansted Hall. And I'd go often with the same tutors, maybe a year or two years apart, they'd see me again. And I remember I was at a point thinking my mediumship really has become stagnant, it's not working as well as I would like. And I went in a course with a tutor I had before and they said to me, Martin, there's such a huge change in your mediumship. And I was quite shocked and taken aback. And they said, yes, the speed at which the information is coming through from spirit is so much quicker. And your delivery is so much more on point, so much sharper. There's less waffle, you just get to it. And I wasn't aware of any of these changes. And I, in my own mind, my own awareness, my own perception was, it's kind of flat or it's maybe even getting worse. So there you go, we're not sometimes best placed to judge it. And another example I'll give you is from my trance work. Uh, during trance, uh, it often felt to me that it was the same, you know, spirit speak through me, the quality of what was spoken always seemed fairly reasonable, but it always seemed fairly much on the level. But I record a number of my uh, trance sessions, and in listening to those recordings, I actually recognized that the quality of what was coming through was growing year on year on year. But if you asked me, without listening to those recordings, do you feel it's becoming better? I would have said, no, it's probably constant, flat, all the same, or maybe not moving as far forward as I would like. So often that's the problem. We're just too close to it to be able to tell. We need somebody else, uh, somebody trusted, who can look at our work and tell us what's working well and what's not. Okay, reason number six is that your mediumship is constantly changing. How we receive evidence changes. The strength of the clairs, clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairknowing, clairaudience, that changes. Different evidence works really well at different times, but not others. We go through phases of it working really well. And the thing is, if you expect your mediumship to be constantly the same, if you expect it to stay the same, and to expect it to work how it's always worked, you're gonna struggle, you're gonna hit challenges, you're gonna hit hurdles. It doesn't work that way. It's constantly changing. As mediums, we have to learn to adapt. We've gotta be flexible, we've gotta go with the flow. If something's not working, great, we go with the flow with what something that is working. So that's what we have to do. We have to go with it. And, but as I say, if we recognize that our mediumship constantly changes, we won't go far wrong. Let me give you a couple of examples as well with my own development and the development of many others I've seen. I started with really strong clairvoyance, really profound images projected into my mind. I didn't have much clairsentience at all, to be truthful. But then over time, my clairvoyance weakened, but my clairsentience began to come in stronger. And it got to the point where I was working with almost no imagery at all and really profound, strong feelings. And then over time, they kind of came into balance. So that's what I'm saying about the... Uh, the psychic senses, the clairs change, how we receive the evidence changes. And again, in my own experience, for a while I was really good at seeing appearances and describing them. And then I was really good at feeling their health conditions and describing what was going on with their health. And then I got really good at getting into their personality. I had a period where I could get dates bang on, but after a while, that left as well. But we work with what's working well in the moment. We don't try and go back to what used to work because our mediumship, remember, is evolving, is changing. And what's happening is the different clairs, we're working with them to, to hone them, the different types of evidence, we're working with it to get better at it. And different ones will come to the fore and then other will, will go down, and then other ones will rise and go down. And then ultimately, at the end of it, it will all find itself in balance working well. That's the ultimate aim. So because it's constantly changing, it sometimes feels like we're going backwards. It sometimes feels like we're getting worse when we're not. So the seventh reason why your mediumship feels like it's getting worse is because it could be. It could be. And we have the, where the medium is stagnating. The medium's stagnating or getting worse. 
As I said, your development can't go backwards, but you can stagnate or get worse through your own behavior, your own actions, your own thoughts, your own approach to mediumship. Some mediums hit a point in their development where they decide that that's it. I'm a good medium now, I'm doing platform, I'm doing sit-ins. I don't need to do any more development. I don't need any more teaching. I can leave all of that behind. I've reached a point where I'm there. But remember, your mediumship's forever changing. Remember, there's always more to evolve, always more to unfold. It's always forever progressing. And what happens with those mediums is they hit a point where they believe that's it. They've got where they want to get. They always work from the same place, do the same thing, work within their comfort zone, play it safe maybe. And often we'll start moving into generics or moving into bad habits. I often see students who I've taught over a number of years or at different courses, sometimes they don't go on any training courses at all or don't do any development and the bad habits start to creep back in. They don't push themselves anymore and their mediumship stagnates or worse still deteriorates. So, and as I said with your awareness, you sometimes you're not aware of getting better and sometimes you're not aware of slowly getting worse. If the deterioration is in slow, gradual increments, you're not aware of it. But other people have not seen you work for quite a while, watch you working and go, ah, I'm not seeing what, they're not, they're not as good as they used to be to me. But of course, bearing in mind that all mediums are variable, we work from our, our, our worst day to our best and we can never judge mediumship based upon one experience. Of course, I get that. But we work within a range, but it's definitely possible through our own behavior, thoughts and actions to go backwards. If we believe we've made it, we can go backwards. So that's the seventh reason is that the medium hits a point where they stop developing and begin to stagnate. So in conclusion, mediumship is a lifelong journey of development. There's always more to unfold. There's always more to develop. We have to be flexible and adaptable. We've got to go with the flow. We've got to expect changes and we won't be disappointed. We've got to push ourselves. We need to stay in development in some way, even if it's not classes, but we, we need to at the very least monitor our own work, see what's working, see what's not, push ourselves in different ways so that we are forever progressing with our work. That's the key. So I hope that you found those seven reasons valuable and beneficial. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do hit the like button, do leave me a comment. If you like my teaching, then do subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to receive notifications of all of my videos. I do release a couple of videos per month. If you want to support the channel, you can do that by uh, checking out my courses, my teaching products, uh, my study program, all available from my website and store, details in the description below. You can also donate to support the channel through PayPal again, details below. But I do hope that you found this video useful. I do hope that you found this video helpful and I look forward to seeing you all again in the next one.